good morning. Today I'm planting some extra beets and some radishes to have a little fall crop. Now, I planted a few radishes in some of my buckets. Didn't get very good germination. So I'm replanting this bucket. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in a lot thicker. Because if the germination's not going to be good, then what the hell. Let's get enough seeds in there that we feel like we're going to get something. Okay? So, that's about that. And this bucket, I'm going to put in a little crop of radishes. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to plant them kind of thick. These are old seed, so I don't know how successful they'll be. I don't know how well they'll germinate. But, you know, it's better than just throwing the pack of seeds away. So I'm going to scatter them pretty thick here and then just stir them into the soil. Be right back. All right, now that's done. Now I wanted to talk a little bit this morning while I've got you about timing. You know, about knowing when you should plant and getting that done. And you know, and not to sweat it if you're a little late or a little early. Uh, you just usually survives. I planted out my uh, green bean plants and melons and uh, I was late, you know. I got busy at work, didn't get it done in time, and it was late. But you know what? And that week, it turned hot. Oh, my. The highs had been beautiful. They'd been in the 70s. And all of a sudden, the week I put these plants in the ground, it turned hot. It started getting way up in the 80s. And this kind of stunted the plants a little bit. They sat there for, you know, a few weeks and, and just didn't look good. But, you know what? If I'd have been a week earlier, I'd have been fine. But as it turns out, yeah, they sat there for a while and looked sick. But they got over it. You know, I planted, picked uh, a gallon of green beans here just a couple of days ago. And I can see on the plants that there's more blooms, there's more beans coming. They're doing okay. And as I, well, I'll just show you. All right. Here's the green beans. And as you can see, there's blooms on them. They're doing okay. There's, there's beans filling out on there. And there's, there's a cluster of new ones starting out. And they're doing okay. The squash is doing all right, too. It looks a little puny, but this is the heat of the day right now. So, you know, it always does that. They look sad, and then in the after, evening, late afternoon, as the sun starts going down, they perk right back up. All right. Now, here's my bed with the watermelons and cantaloupes. And... They sat there for the long, I didn't think I was going to get anything out of this. But you know what? They're starting to do it. 
So don't get too depressed if, if your timing is off a little bit. You know, that's just okay. Now, in, Can in East Kansas, where I'm at, it's, uh, oh, I can't pull up the zone off the top of my head. I believe it's six or seven, not sure. Wouldn't take a second to check and find out. But for us, in March is when early stuff goes in. In uh, April, about the middle of April, when you get to that date when you're not going to have any more frosts, or you're pretty safe from a frost or a winter storm. And when that happens, you know, you're okay to go ahead and put in, you know, the majority of the rest of your stuff. All right, and for us, about the first week or so of May is when you go in with your really warm loving plants. You know, that's the point where, hey, the nights aren't really getting cold anymore. So that's sort of how it is. And when it comes to fall, any of the early stuff, you can plant it. And when you get into late July, August, if you want to put in another little crop of lettuce, radishes, uh, you can do broccoli or, or something of that nature if you have the plants available or if you've started some. But, and, and you know, I don't usually do a lot of fall garden, but I'm going to do a little this year. Gearing up, folks, you know, I'm, uh, I've said before, I'm, you know, nearing retirement age. Well, once I retire and I have time to can, and I have time to, to garden more, you know, I want this to be a big part of my diet. I want to be able to produce enough out of my garden that I can put up jars of produce to eat all year long. So, you know, I won't put out a little patch of green beans. I'll plant a whole bed. And, you know, a couple of squash plants, nah, not nah, probably not. Probably be more than that. Probably be twice that. So, that's, that's just kind of it. Don't sweat it if you're a little late. Things kind of work out. Uh, and figure out in your zone when those dates are. That it's safe to plant. That it's okay. The nights are now not getting, you know, so so cool anymore. Okay, I can put out my tomatoes and peppers and stuff like that. And just, you know, you can experiment around a little bit. Uh, my gosh, I've tried several gardening methods before I ended up on this one, which I think is the best of all. And it's uh, based on the writings of Ruth Stout. And now I've added a little to it. I don't believe Ruth talked about crop rotation. I think that's kind of necessary in this kind of plan. But, you know, she was, I, uh, there's always people who bring up this, this British person, Charles Dowding, when they talk about no-till gardening. And I want you to understand that Dowding, while has a lot of popularity, he's way more current as far as, you know, he, he, he's done this over the last 20 years, you know. Uh, so... You know, his videos are, are more seen, and that's who people equate with it. But Ruth Stout was doing this decades before Dowding got onto it. So, well, that's all for today, folks. I want you to have a good day. Get out and play in your garden a little bit. 